Pharmacology SAQ19, Reversal of Neuromuscular Blockade A. Outline the mechanism of spontaneous recovery from neuromuscular blockade following the administration of procuronium. Following the administration of procuronium, spontaneous recovery from neuromuscular blockade occurs via diffusion of procuronium down a concentration gradient back to the plasma from which it is cleared by excretion of unmetabolized rocuronium by the kidneys into the urine, 10 to 25%, and liver into the bowel, 50 to 70%, and minimal metabolism, 10 to 20% in the liver, to 17 deaths acetyl rocuronium, which has 5% of the activity of the parent compound. Metabolism of rocuronium does not occur at the neuromuscular junction, unlike acetylcholine. As the concentration of rocuronium decreases at the neuromuscular junction, more acetylcholine receptors may be stimulated by ACH secreted from pre-junctional neurons, and recovery from neuromuscular blockade occurs when less than 75% of postsynaptic ACHRs are blocked. B. Which classes of drugs can be used to antagonize the actions of rocuronium, and briefly describe their mechanism of actions? Classes of drugs that can be used to antagonize the action of rocuronium include anticholine esterases such as neostigmine and selective relaxant binding agents such as sugamadex. Mechanism of action For neostigmine, it inhibits acetylcholine esterase as a competitive substrate by combining reversibly with it by formation of an ester linkage to form a carbamylated enzyme complex. Acetylcholine esterase has two active sites, the anionic site and the esteretic site. Neostigmine acts as a competitive substrate and being acted upon by ACHE and after forming an intermediate acid enzyme compound, the drug molecule is spliced by ACHE and in the process transfer of a carbamate group to the serine residue on the esteretic site. This forms a covalent bond at the esteretic site, hence inhibiting acetylcholine esterase. Sustained inhibition of ACHE occurs due to prolonged process of hydrolysis of neostigmine after it binds to the anionic site of ACHE and then to an esteretic subsite. Carbamylated ACHE cannot hydrolyze ACH until the carbamate enzyme bond dissociates. This leads to increased acetylcholine concentration from ACHE inhibition, causing activation of nicotinic and muscarinic receptors, leading to muscarinic and nicotinic effects including return of muscle power. Neostigmine also increases ACH release by its presynaptic actions. Neostigmine also has direct stimulatory effect on skeletal muscle acetylcholine receptors. Sugamadex. This is a modified gamma cyclodextrin with eight oligosaccharide side chains at the cyclodextrin ring. The hydrophilic external tails on the toroid attracts the quaternary nitrogen group of the aminosteroid muscle relaxant and draws it into the lipophilic core of sugamadex. These eight oligosaccharides are arranged in a cylindrical structure to encapsulate all four steroidal rings of rocuronium completely. Encapsulation of rocuronium or vacuronium by sugamadex is irreversible and is done in a ratio of 1 to 1. A stable structure is formed that is water-soluble, favoring removal from the neuromuscular junction into the plasma and is excreted unchanged by the kidneys. ACHR occupancy by the aminosteroid muscle relaxant reduces, and muscle power resumes due to increased acetylcholine receptor reactivation by ACH. The van der Waals forces, hydrogen bonds, and hydrophobic interactions make the sugamadex rocuronium complex very tight. The sugamadex rocuronium complex has a very high association rate and a very low dissociation rate. It is estimated that for every 25 million sugamadex rocuronium complexes, only one complex dissociates. C. What are the advantages and disadvantages of these antagonist drugs? Neostigmine. Advantages include low cost. It is widely available. There is no need for reconstitution. Neostigmine may be given IV, IM, or subcutaneously. Repeated doses can be administered. Neostigmine does not cross the blood-brain barrier to cause central cholinergic effects as it is a quaternary ammonium compound. Neostigmine is able to reverse neuromuscular blockade 
caused by any non-depolarizing neuromuscular blocker. However, it slows the metabolism of mevacurium. Neostigmine is a useful alternative if sugamadex is contraindicated, such as in end-stage renal failure or anaphylaxis. Unlike sugamadex, which is excreted 100% renally unchanged, 50% of neostigmine is metabolized by plasma esterases. However, since 50% of neostigmine is excreted renally unchanged, the dose should be reduced in renal failure. Neostigmine also has other uses apart from reversing neuromuscular blockade, such as in the treatment of myasthenia gravis, paralytic ileus, and atonic bladder. Disadvantages of Neostigmine Neostigmine disintegrates when exposed to light. There is greater variability in time to recovery, with potential for post-op residual neuromuscular blockade if recovery time is delayed. PRMB is associated with pulmonary complications, unpleasant muscle weakness, and prolonged stay in the paku. Neostigmine is unable to reverse deep neuromuscular blockade. Recovery from neuromuscular blockade must be established before neostigmine is given, i.e. tough count of 2 or more, DBS twitch of more than 1, and PTC of more than 15, with a typical dose of 0.05 mg per kg. Neostigmine is unable to reverse deep neuromuscular blockade because of sealing effect and biased competition. Regarding sealing effect, there is a finite amount of acetylcholine at the neuromuscular junction. Once all the ACHE has been inhibited, further increasing the dose of neostigmine above 0.07 mg per kg will not result in higher ACH concentration. Second reason is biased competition. Non-depolarizing muscle relaxants compete with acetylcholine at the two binding sites on the alpha subunits or nicotinic acetylcholine receptors. Binding of only one NDMR molecule is required to prevent activation, while simultaneous binding of two ACH molecules is required to activate the receptor. This strongly biases the competition in favor of NDMR. At high concentrations of NDMR, a very large amount of acetylcholine would be required to competitively overcome the block. Neostigmine has slower onset than Sugamanex, with peak effect at 10 minutes for Neostigmine compared to 1.5 to 3 minutes for Sugamanex. Neostigmine can cause cholinergic side effects, such as muscarinic effects and nicotinic effects. Examples of muscarinic effects include increased exocrine gland activity, lacrimation, salivation, rhinorrhea, bronchorrhea, hyperamylacemia, and sweating. Cardiac effects include bradycardia, hypotension, and arrhythmias. Increased smooth muscle activity leads to bronchoconstriction, bladder stimulation and incontinence, sphincter relaxation, meiosis, and increased GI motility, vomiting, diarrhea, and abdominal cramps. Nicotinic effects include muscle fasciculations, muscle weakness, and muscle cramping. Neostigmine do not cause CNS effects as it does not cross the blood-brain barrier. Thus, neostigmine is not suitable for certain patients such as those who have bronchospasm, bradycardia, intestinal and urinary obstruction. There is a need for adding anticholinergics to counter cholinergic side effects. Neostigmine and glycopyrrolate have similar times to onset and durations of action, hence they cancel out each other better. Atropine has a faster onset and shorter duration than neostigmine. This leads to early tachycardia followed by late bradycardia, which may present itself in the recovery unit. Glycopyrrolate is a quaternary amine and does not cross the blood-brain barrier, whereas atropine is a tertiary amine that crosses the blood-brain barrier to potentially cause central anticholinergic syndrome, especially in the elderly. Neostigmine inhibits plasma choline esterase, but sugamadex does not. Neostigmine thus prolongs the effects of drugs metabolized by plasma choline esterase, which include saxamethonium, mevacurium, ester local anesthetics, and acetylcholine esterases. Sugamadex. Advantages. There is no need for reconstitution. Repeat doses can be administered. Rapid onset of effect in all patients with shorter average time to recovery. This is beneficial in patients who are at high risk of complications related to residual blockade, such as the obese, elderly, severe COPD, severe cardiovascular disease, and patients with neuromuscular diseases. Sugamadex is able to reverse the effect of any level of neuromuscular blockade, 
including deep blocks, forocuronium and vacuronium. For example, in procedures requiring deep neuromuscular blockade, cases completed with top count of 1 to 3, cannot intubate, cannot ventilate scenario following rocuronium, and short surgeries requiring neuromuscular blockade. Brul SJ et al. classified the depth of block according to the results of neuromuscular monitoring, profound block, PTC count, train of 4 count, train of 4 ratio, all are 0. For deep block, PTC count is 1 or more, whereas train of 4 count and train of 4 ratio are 0. For moderate block, TOFC is 1 to 3, whereas TOFR is 0. For light block, TOFC is 4. For TOFR, fate is present and it is 0 0.1 to 0 0.4. For minimal block near recovery, TOFC is 4, there is no fate, TOFR is between 0 0.4 to 0 0.9. For full recovery, TOFC is 4, there is no fate, and TOFR is 0 0.9 or more. For profound block, the dose is 16 mg per kg sugamadex. Time to TOFR more than 0 0.9 is 1.5 minutes. For deep block, the dose is 4 mg per kg. Time to TOFR more than 0 0.9 is 3 minutes. For moderate block, TOF count of 2 or more, dose is 2 mg per kg, whereas TOF count of 1, dose is 4 mg per kg, and time to TOFR of more than 0 0.9 is 2 minutes. Sugamandex does not have cholinergic side effects, hence may be given when neostigmine is contraindicated. There is no need to add anticholinergics to Sugamandex during administration, thus avoiding side effects of anticholinergics. Sugamadex does not prolong the effects of mevacurium, ester local anesthetics, and saxamethonium. Disadvantages of Sugamadex includes high cost, low availability, requires protection from light, may be given intravenously only. Sugamadex is not recommended in end-stage renal failure due to concerns of delayed clearance of the Sugamadex rocuronium complex. Sugamadex is excreted in the urine unchanged, but its action does not depend on renal excretion. It appears to be safe to use in severe CKD, but it is not recommended for GFR of less than 30 ml per minute, as clearance may take much longer, and repeated muscle relaxation with rocuronium may be needed. It is unpredictably removed by dialysis. Sugamadex is only able to reverse neuromuscular blockade for certain drugs, i.e. rocuronium and vacuronium. Sugamadex has 2.5 times higher affinity to rocuronium compared to vacuronium. There is some binding capacity to pancuronium but it is too little to be of clinical benefit. Side effects of Sugamadex are rare but include bronchospasm, pulmonary edema, desaturation, hypotension, laryngospasm, bradycardia and cardiac arrest. Sugamadex does not cause clinically relevant QTC prolongation. Drug interactions Sugamadex may encapsulate exogenous progesterones such as those in oral contraceptives, leading to failed contraception. Use of a single dose of Sugamadex is equivalent to one missed dose of oral contraceptive pill. Alternative contraceptive method is recommended for 7 days after administration of Sugamadex. Drugs that can displace procurinium from Sugamadex include fusidic acid, fluoxacillin, and toramifid. Repeat dose of rocuronium or vacuronium after Sugamadex administration may not be effective until Sugamadex is cleared. It is currently recommended that after initial reversal of neuromuscular blockade with Sugamadex, 24 hours should be allowed before rocuronium can be re-administered. Based on the maximum clearance time of Sugamadex in all patients, it is recommended that in case of need of neuromuscular blockade before this time interval, Succinylcholine or a benzyl isoquinoline neuromuscular blocker should be given. However, a study by G. Camo et al. concluded that rapid re-onset of neuromuscular blockade occurred after repeat dose of rocuronium 1.2 mg per kg as early as 5 minutes after Sugamadex in healthy volunteers. Re-onset of block took longer if the second rocuronium dose was less than 25 minutes after Sugamadex. The duration of action of second rocuronium dose increased with later repeat dose time points. Additional information. In the website Ketamine Nightmares by author Stuart N. Watson, 
there is a wonderful comparison table between Neostigmin and Sugamadex, and it is included here for completion. Thank you.